Wellsboro. Shit. I'm still only in Wellsboro. Every time I think I'm going to wake up back in the woods. After I was home after my first hunt, it was worse. I'd wake up and there'd be nothing. I hardly said a word to my wife until I said yes to a divorce. When I was here, I wanted to be there. When I was there, all I could think about is getting back into the woods. I'm here a week now, waiting for a hunt. Getting softer. Every minute I stay in this room, I get weaker. Every minute a buck beds in the woods, he gets stronger. Each time I looked around, these walls moved in a little tighter. Hey, White Rook 85. Welcome to the solo piece of Deer Camp 2021. Be here from Monday to Thursday by myself, four days. Kind of going to play a little bit like a solo, just a solo trip, fall or summer solo trip. Doing a few things here or there, doing some things in the cabin. Uh, doing some things on the wall of honor over there. Another pin, a, a picture of my dad to put up. Have a, a replacement shelf in there for that silver shelf in there. Going to swap that out. So, uh, and if you saw the thing about uh, Mrs. Rook and the divorce, uh, no, no, that, that's that's not happening. As a matter of fact, uh, 1980s at some point we're in a Chinese restaurant and I got the fortune cookie and I'm paraphrasing, but it says she is the guiding light of your existence. I still have that in my wallet today, and it's however long, so, you know, like I said, from the 80s until now. So you can do the math, but uh, no, that's not happening. But uh, enjoy that little opening piece. It was kind of fun to do. And uh, like I said, stay tuned, get that beverage, kick back and enjoy. It's getting on about one o'clock or so, a little after one actually. Uh, I'm over here in the, the cafe, the blue pot, and uh, I brought a picture of my dad here, and here it is right here, close up so you can see it. And uh, he played football at East Strasburg, and uh, you can sort of see a locker room in the back. It looks like a locker room to me, and this is a, a very young picture of him. This is somebody that I didn't know. Uh, you know, I wasn't around when, when he was at this age, so I didn't know this version of him. Uh, it kind of matched what what it what I had with senior. Probably he's probably a few years older than him, but uh, close. And I kind of like this picture. Looks like somebody just kind of snapped it as he was walking through the locker room. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that up with uh, with senior's picture over here. Uh, a pin that I'm going to put up, and uh, this one is of the eighth. This is the eighth Air Force uh, symbol when they were still the eighth. Army Air Force, uh, when they, the Air Force hadn't been actually split off from the Army branch yet. Uh, always liked, that's kind of my favorite branch, World War II, is the Air Force. Always a, a lot of interest in airplanes. And I think from seeing the uh, TV show and movie 12 O'Clock High, uh, it was always one of my favorites. I wish that was on now. But this one's kind of for me a little bit. Uh, I don't know anybody that was in the uh, Army Air Force, 8th Army Air Force, uh, but I kind of liked it. And it's to honor them. Uh, they they actually did a lot uh, in, in World War II. Uh, they really brought Germany's industry to a halt, and I don't think they get enough credit for that. Certainly always a, a salute to them and all the, the big uh, four-engine planes, the, the B-17, the B-29, the Liberator, 
and uh, all the fighters, of course, the Mustang and, and all down the line. I uh, also have here, this is uh, a little coin that Tractor Supply gives out. Mickey sent me that. Mickey from Tractor Supply sent me that. They send this, uh, or they give this out to veterans. He sent me one to go ahead and put up here. So I'm going to also go ahead and do that. And we'll get them in place and uh, certainly uh, continue to grow this little area up here, honoring our veterans uh, for sure and, and, and good, good friends. Our Air Force pin and the veterans salute from Tractor Supply and Mickey. Appreciate that. And then my dad up there next to Senior. You know, uh, looking good. And uh, you know, I'll get some more pins and, and keep filling that, that little shelf up. You know, Monday afternoon, back out uh, on the the other side over near where they did some cutting. I see some tracks through here and uh, have one going right past where I was. So I think they're moving through here eating some of the tops of these trees. So I uh, figured as good a spot as any. I'm kind of hidden in here and I should see them before they see me. That's the key. Now I'll just sit back here for couple hours and uh, see what happens this afternoon. Heading back in. Solar lights are on. Nothing this afternoon. Time for some deer stew. Get it started. As it's percolating a little bit, I'll go ahead and get changed. There, about 30. Kind of got cold this afternoon. About three quarters of a cup of coffee. Get that going. Have a little butter in my stew pot here. Yeah. Put some onions in, some potatoes, some veggies, and green these off. Uh, mixed veggies here. Just lighten it up just a little bit. Some deer roast that uh, Mrs. Rook canned up last October 30th. This is the my deer from North Carolina last year. Of course, canned so it could last uh, three, four, five years. Let's pop the top on that. There we go. Definitely sealed. Gonna put all the juice and everything right in. Here you go, dear. Even a little fat in there, which is good. That's it. Let's get things stirred up. Got the potatoes in there, the veggies. See if I have to add some liquid. Man, that stove is hot. That stove right there. Woo! Kicking. A little ingredient we need. Just a little bit of Heineken in there, too. Yeah, it was probably about five ounces. Maybe. Maybe. Probably closer to four. And we got some brown gravy going in there. That's what's going to give us a good flavor and tighten things up a little bit. Bring that up to a boil and let it simmer for a little bit while I sit back and relax. Our stew's about done. We got a couple pieces of uh, garlic toast. We're going to get going. Well, a few more minutes for that. And I'm going to have this again on Wednesday. So I know it's uh, it's going to be good tonight. It's going to be even better on Wednesday. Time for a little dinner. A nice, nice deer stew. I uh, wish I had another one hanging out there, but uh, haven't seen anything. If I had a doe license, I could have had one, but that's uh, not really interested in the doe up here. I'd rather see them reproducing because there's just not enough just deer. So let's enjoy this dinner, and then we're going to get on to a movie. For those of you that took the guess, my last video, 
Yeah, it was Guns of Navarone. A lot of people got that one. I thought they were going to get stumped on it, but uh, you knew it. Guns of Navarone. That was actually the one. You know, I'm going to bring another one up. Sit and watch that one tonight. I'll show you a frame and see if you can get that too. Uh, here's a, a perfect one for a cold, snowy night. You're supposed to get an inch of snow tonight. So, uh, you might be able to get that one. You recognize a couple of the people. I know the picture quality isn't real good, but uh, you'll see if you can get this one. I think you can. Like I said, uh, it's a cold, snowy night. This is one of my favorite movies to watch. Gonna go ahead and sit back and watch that. I think Mike gave me a maybe a Samuel Adams winter wheat, maybe. I could have that with the... Uh, uh, with the movie here, and uh, I am not getting up in the morning. It's been uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday that I've got up, and Tuesday I'm, I'm sleeping in tomorrow. So I'll go out in the afternoon, but uh, I have something to do in here, then in the morning, and then, like I said, we'll go in the afternoon. Well, that was a good night last night to uh, watch that movie. Uh, if you have the guess, go ahead and write it in the comments. Uh, always one of my favorites. That's uh, one of my personal favorites, absolutely. I'm uh, going to start watching Band of Brothers. As a matter of fact, uh, after that one, I did watch the first one. Uh, first of many of Band of Brothers, and uh, that's a great one also. Uh, as you know, I didn't get up this morning. just stayed until about 8 o'clock-ish or whatever it was. and felt good to get the bones uh, rested up a little bit. Ready for a little another sit this afternoon. Uh, as you can see, snow in the background. Uh, we're supposed to get about an inch or so. Uh, we'll see what happens. And it's supposed to warm up a little bit. Eh, three, three and a half inches or so. Uh, total accumulation over the last uh, four days or so. Uh, the spot where Mike's truck was sitting. As you can see, you can still tell where it was. So... Not a not a ton of snow, uh, but uh, going to go out there, and uh, I have that, that shelf in the Jeep over there. I'm going to go get the shelf and uh, start putting that together. also have the firewood over here, which uh, I have to stack up some more firewood in the cabin. It's time to, to fill that rack back up again. So a couple things to do this morning, and then, like I said, we'll be back out uh, this afternoon. I think I'm going to go again back over this way up, up down the hill over towards those lots that were uh, that were sold off and uh, I think I'm gonna go a little bit deeper uh, down in there and uh, see if what's going on and see if I can see a little bit farther and see if I can actually see a deer for a change huh? Boy, what a what a switch that would be huh uh, really haven't gotten any reports up here so far about anybody getting anything i really think pennsylvania needs to make some changes or something this weekend start is not uh you know that is not working out absolutely there's there's no more people now than there was before i think you might be getting a few more kids but you know if the like before if the parents really wanted them to get out there they'd be taken off from school and uh, you know what? Are, what are we missing these days? Zoom classes? You know, so PA Game Commission. I think you need, you still have some work to do. I mean, I know there's some great deer being taken, a lot bigger deer than I had way back when I started out. But uh, as far as like seeing deer, if I was a young person and I came up here, it'll be like, oh, great. It's 26 degrees. I'm sitting down here in the cold for four hours. I don't see nothing. That doesn't really get you into deer hunting. At least if you see some things, that gets you into it. Well, I guess that's enough of my rant on the PA Game Commission for today. Well, I'm going to get my uh, shoes on. I'm going to go get that shelf, start putting that together. I think I'm going to clean this one off first and uh, and get working on this. Well, there's the, the swap out. I mean, it's kind of crazy, but uh, since we needed a shelf down in our uh, basement, I think the black actually looks a lot better, kind of matches our our lights and some of the other stuff in here, kind of the, the black and tan theme. Uh, that silver just wasn't cutting it. Still, snow is still coming down, about 11 o'clock, a little after. And uh, as you can see, my wood's down a little bit, so it's time to, to go get some of that. Yeah, back where it should be, nice and stacked and ready for a few more days. It's always always comforting to see a nice, nice wood pile ready to go. I'll just work my way around down through that cut area and loop back. I'm sort of like right on the edge of our property, right near Sean's stand. So he's gonna have some good views coming up. 
nice view down through here. Snow has stopped. I'm not supposed to pick up again. Yeah, at least for a day or so. So we're good for now. See if anything's moving down in that bowl down there. And we'll get into some hunting. And if nothing happens, trudge back and get the spaghetti going. There's always look forward to a good meal anyway. Burn a few calories doing this, so spaghetti will be good when we get back. Way down there. I'd say that's that's a good 300 and some yards. Got a nice doe sitting out there. Chewing some of that tops of those trees. Uh, of course, no doe license, but at least I'm seeing a deer. I know he's not coming across, but uh, he's way down that way. So I'll look to see if anything else is around him. That's the only one I've seen this afternoon, but hey, at least I saw something. And uh, being in here where I can see a pretty good distance, uh, I think is really helping. Had a good afternoon out there. Uh, saw that one, about 300-ish yards. No range finder, but uh, 300 yards, I'm guessing. Uh, whether it was a button buck or a, a doe, uh, it, I could still tell it was small because the body was short. Uh, but if it was a buck and I had a steady rest, I think I could have found one. Uh, I think the Creedmoor could have reached out that far. I mean, I have the uh, Vortex scope with the notches. And, I, and uh, the second notch is three and a quarter. See if I could have reached out and touched it. But uh, hey, it's a doe or a button buck. So uh, hey, it gets to live another day and hopefully through the season and, and on then into next year. But right now, if you're as hungry as I am, uh, it's pasta time. Uh, gonna get a little bit of pasta going here. Right here. Canned beef by Mrs. Rook. And uh, I'm gonna use this. In the sauce, I got some uh, porcini mushroom and uh, a little bit of onions going in there and some pasta. And we're going to enjoy a nice pasta dinner and then I'll have some more of this uh, left over on Thursday night. Nothing like cooking it now and then just doing a little reheat another night to make it nice and easy. So let's get this started. We'll get a nice pasta going, have a beer, and we'll see what else is going on this evening. Yeah, a little onions. Glaze them up a little bit. Soften them up. Let them get a little translucent. They're getting there. Starting to. You can see it. Hey. No banging. Little mushrooms. And here's the canned up beef. This is just ground beef that was canned. all broken up that is cooked already so really we're just heating it we'll get that sauce in there in a few minutes a little porcini let that sit upside down for a minute so you can get a little bit more out of it no messes don't make any messes well that looks like enough for all five of us doesn't it well that was a good dinner really hit the spot Took a little while to make it, but it was worth the wait. Now, one question that I've got in the past, uh, do you worry about being alone up there? And I usually take something with me. I, I don't advertise it. I don't show it in the videos, but I usually have something with me. Uh, this time, I have my judge with me. And uh, it is unloaded for this demo. And underneath of it, I have the Through Night TW10. Really super, super flashlight. And here it is lighting, lighting everything up really nice. I mean, you have a perfect target on there and I can, it helps. I can outline the sights also. Now, like I said, this will go for three minutes at 900 and then taper its way down to about 427. And that lasts fairly long time. Uh, so uh, this is usually something I have like up here. If you're thinking about it, TW10 uh, from through night, Pretty nice light that'll mount under your firearm. Wednesday morning in the blind. I'm going to try to do a fairly long sit today, maybe 11 ish, 10 30, 11 if I can. And then uh, take a walk back up and around back to the cabin. So in here pretty early, as you can see, and uh, we'll uh, 
We'll see if anything's moving today. It's about nine o'clock. Nothing, nothing so far, nothing moving. I'm hearing some crows and that's about it. But I thought I might see something down in there because that's where they're usually walking. That's where I usually see them from my stand up on the ridge. But uh, now let's go down over here, pop this and uh, yeah, that's the uh, thermos. It's time for some coffee, nine o'clock coffee. That's what'll keep you out of here a little bit longer. So I'm gonna get a nice cup of this. That smells pretty good in here. Got some Starbucks and it smells good right in this blind. And hopefully the, the deer can't smell this, but uh, I sure can. Let's, let's enjoy some. Well, here's the blind. I was in, it's set up, it's on a logging road, it runs this way. And there's another down along that way also. That is the sun, not full sun, but the sun which I've seen about an hour in the last five days. We'll see how much we're going to get some blue sky off this way. Uh, we'll see if we're going to get some. And uh, this is our little solar panel for our lights. And it has not been getting much. So I'm going to put another string up of the plug-ins when we're here and if it doesn't last because we just haven't been getting the sun to charge that up to last for the evening last about two hours or so or three and that's just not going to do it since it gets dark at five o'clock or a little after five by eight o'clock it's out a spare set up and then somebody comes up here and for some reason it didn't charge you up uh, well they'll have a little bit of a backup just to give us some some porch light out here when you come out to grab a beverage or do whatever you do out here so let me get those set up i'm going to run them up there close to the to the rafter there uh instead of over this side instead of jamming a bunch of lights all together i'll just go ahead and put them up this way those are up and in place so in case the sun lets us down, well, we can have these orange ones going. Nice to come out here and you don't worry about a bear being out here. Not that I've ever seen one on the deck, but you never know. I've got a couple questions about ham radio. I uh, just want to let you know that uh, I did get my ham radio license also. The, there's basically three levels. I'm at the technician level and Mrs. Ruck, of course, is up here. She got her general license and she got her extra license, which basically gives you more room in the bands of the, uh, being on the radio of, of where you can broadcast at. And uh, congratulations to her. She took the three tests and got 100 on all three. And that's not easy to do. If you take these ham tests, it's not easy to do. I know a few people ask me about it. Uh, I'm a very, very, very much a beginner at this. And the best thing to do is get on just what you're on on YouTube. There's some guys out there that will help you with taking the tests. They actually have the classes online for, for you to help you successfully do the test. And there's some other things like hamstudy.org and some links, and I'll have them down below if you're interested. Kind of poke around the internet a little bit, poke around YouTube and see about the ham, see if that's something you want to get into. Just have some fun with the ham. You meet some new one people. We joined a couple ham clubs and uh, just to meet some people and to get out of the house a little bit and do some different things. So we're having some fun with it and, and you may too. You're coming back to your camp after a long day, fishing, hunting, anything. You get back to your cabin, you hit the door and you're greeted with this, nothing. You have to fumble around for, go start the generator, pull start and stink gas and fumes. You just get your flashlight, come over to this vatted power station, hit the on button and there you go. That was easy as anything. That's just almost like going in and hitting an electric switch uh, on your wall, just like you would do anywhere else. So let's take a look at this vatted 600. Uh, this is a 
Uh, I would say a budget or cheaper than some of the others I've shown to you. Some of those have been a little expensive. So let's take a look at maybe for a budget conscious person or somebody just wants a little bit camping at their, at their cabin. Uh, take this along with them. Let's take a look at it for a few minutes. And here it is. This is the vatted 600 watt portable power station. 518 watt hours for a capacity of 140,000 milliamps. This can do nine devices at once. Has a lot of things across the front here. Of course, uh, these lights I'm, I'm doing right now. I'll take a look at the TV in a minute, but you can easily run some things like this. Very nice display here in the front. So this is uh, really nice when you need some extra power. You need to recharge your some devices like the phone here. And there we go. Just turned on the DC. And my phone is now charging off of it. We got a phone charging. We got two lights on. And uh, this, these are really, really nice. And this is, like I said, this is the, this is more of a budget uh, type. This is super, super light. Only weighs 10 pounds. So you could carry this thing anywhere you wanted to. Really nice compact unit. Uh, can charge, uh, like I said, nine devices at once. The battery's a lithium ion. Again, these give the pure sine wave. So you can charge your phone. You can run a PC off of it. You don't have to worry about dirty energy that you get from a normal generator. So this is the, these are the th things you kind of want to do. Two USBs. It can be charged up in from zero to 100 in three and a half hours if you charge it from an AC and you charge it with a, a say like a uh, Apple device and it has an input right here in the center. So you're actually charging it two ways at the same time. So you can go zero to 100 in three and a half hours, which is great. Camping or being emergency, wildfires, hurricane, floods, you know, this, this is the way you can do it. And it does solar, so you could get a solar panel that will connect to it also. Let's take a look at uh, Cook using it with his CPAP. Well, this is the one great thing about the unit. And here's this typical CPAP device. We'll go ahead and plug it in. As you can see, it is on. We'll go ahead and turn it on. Hear the air being pumped out, so it's definitely working. So as you can see, it's going. It says it'll go about uh, eight hours or so. Well, this is if you have a CPAP device and you don't want to rent a generator all night. This is definitely something you want to get right here. I've been checking this out now for about a month actually, and it's done a lot of things. I really like the front and uh, how the display tells you how long this is going to last. That's really kind of a game changer with these things. Uh, just to know how much watch am I drawing and how long this is going to last. Really, really nice. Let's go over and turn the, the TV on and the DVD player and see if we can get those going too. And I moved it over to the normal spot. So hit the TV, DVD. Here's Band of Brothers. DVD player is on, TV is on. Drawing about 65 watts and says we can go for eight hours. So if I wanted to watch a little TV... You could certainly do that in an emergency situation. You didn't have power. You needed to get onto the TV for a little bit to check things. You could certainly do that. It's not going to run forever, but uh, eight hours. And, and again, that's with the DVD on. You probably wouldn't be running that. So you could check to see what the situation is. So great unit. Check it out in the links below. Uh, like I said, budget-minded. Not quite as expensive as some of the others I've shown in the past. Something that uh, if you have a want to go camping or a small cabin, you may be interested in, in this unit. Go onto my Amazon storefront or anything like that and bought some things off of that. All that stuff gets put back into things for the cabin. Again, like I said, one at a time, uh, it, it goes here. It doesn't go to pay my electric bill or anything like that. It just supplies for up here is really what it's used for. And for those of you that have visited the, the storefront, uh, uh, appreciate it and it's really it's the things that I think are really nice for the cabin it's, it's basic all cabin stuff and, and camping and things like that so uh, if you get a chance take a look at that well here it is Thursday morning already uh, hey thanks for being with me keeping me company for this trip 
Absolutely. I really appreciate that. Uh, you staying with me gives me a little company during this alone time. This morning, Thursday morning, well, I didn't go out this morning, but I don't. The last three years I've been up now, I uh, have not uh, went out Thursday morning. I saved this for my kind of cleanup. I know the guys are coming in tomorrow. The last thing they want to do is come in with the dirty, stinking slob in the place already. So as you can see, the hair is washed. Uh, the rest of the body is washed thanks to, what is this, Quick Dude Shower and Cold Shower by, uh, this is Dude Wipe and this is uh, Duke Cannon. So a combination of that on the body and then an actual true hair wash, uh, shampoo and everything, uh, really got me to the point of being freshened up. So you're out there camping, uh, you know, even, uh, even backpacking or something like that, you want a quick cleanup. Either one of these products is great. I'm not trying to push products. I'm just saying, hey, these really work for me. Give them a chance. So what else I'm going to do today? Not too much. I'm going to go out this afternoon, probably down the hill again, see if I can find them where I saw that dough uh, the other afternoon, see if they're eating the tops. Uh, we'll have to see what the, the weather's doing today. Might be some rain. We're not sure yet, or I'm not sure yet. Uh, in the meantime, uh, these right here, these are a couple things that I've made uh, out, actually all the way back 2009 when we cleared that field. Uh, we took pieces of oak and uh, senior cut them at about, uh, they're about an inch and a half thick or so. And I put, uh, I burned those onto it. It's, uh, I forget what it's, pyro something. I forget the term, but here it is right here. When you're actually burning something into a piece of wood. I also did the coffee shack form uh, back. I have my name on the back in June 23rd, 2009. So I also did this for him. And uh, the chairman's moving around a few things in there. So I think uh, he moved it. So I think I'm going to take it. I'll just put it up with the others right over here. And if you're wondering what the blurry stuff is, well, that's uh, personal info. And of course, I don't like any of that stuff getting out. So uh, that's why you might see a couple blurry spots on there. But uh, really nice. Uh, they've set, been in here now for 13 years or 12 years. And uh, kind of nice to see them when I come in. And reminds me of the day that uh, Senior and I uh, helped the guy clear all these fields out. So that's kind of what I have in store. Not too, too much today. Like I said, we'll go out this afternoon. There it is up with the other two. Nice to see those together. The old coffee shack. Senior loved his coffee. That's for sure. Nothing like a Winston and a coffee. Here's one other one I did way back then. Also trout fish into Pine Creek, Blackwell, one of our favorite spots. Haven't done any of that for a little bit of one of these days I may get back into it again. Last afternoon for the solo hunt down in that area where they did a lot of clear cutting and uh, I've already seen five or six of them so they're definitely in here uh, they were all does there was no bucks in them so I'm just gonna post up this afternoon kind of have this brush pile behind me here breaking my outline up and then we'll see if anything comes walking through so it was a it was a nice uh, solo time. Uh, and again, I thank you for coming along. Uh, if anything happens, I'll certainly let you know this evening or get some film of it. But uh, everybody have a good one. Take care and catch you next time. Oh, that's right. I got one more thing to do this evening. Last couple hundred yards, this rain just started hitting. I think it's a small pocket, but just made it back in time. So, speaking of time, pasta time.